Hey, this is Steve, OH3SPN. Now, I wanted to do a video today on how I've set up Amicom 2.3 under Amiga OS 3.1 to connect over a, a virtual serial port. This is emulated under Linux, and it's connecting via a virtual serial port, which is actually sending all of the serial, the KISS serial commands over the network to my desktop, which is running Direwolf, which is connected to the ICOM 7300. And it's all working fantastically, except today there seems to be some sort of RITI contest. And as is tradition with the ICOM 7300, if there's any strong signals anywhere near the piece of band I want to work, then the front end is completely obliterated and the weak signals are just lost. So <laughs> I'll try to show what I've done. And then maybe later on when the contest is over, or maybe another day, I can do a proper video of this. So uh, I'll try to connect once more just to show this in operation. This is the emulated Amiga. I'll try and connect to PE1RRR. The 7300 keys up and and no success. Actually, I can hear him. I can hear it in the background. But again, the, the strong Ritty is just, it's not even on the frequency, but it's just destroying the, the poor icon. This, I, I have this trouble constantly. Um, if I have the AGC on, then the strong signal anywhere on the band causes the, the gain to drop right off, at which point the weak signals that are S1 or below disappear. The thing to do is to set the AGC off and then back off the RF gain so that the front end is no longer overloaded, but then again, the weak signals drop down into the noise. But we have some sort of success here. I have connected. I don't know how long this will last for. But you can see it's working and when it's working, it works really well. It's really nice to have old Amicom up and running albeit on a virt uh, virtual Amiga. Although it's running on my EPC, which is, it's a netbook and it makes it fully portable. And because it's talking over Wi-Fi to my desktop running Direwolf, it's, it's a really nice portable packet solution. So yeah, this isn't working, so I'll, I'll disconnect and quit the emulator. And you can see the commands here that set up the emulated serial device. It's just a, a SOCAT, and I've created a device, dev vttys0 for virtual tty serial zero and then the IP address of my desktop and the port number that Direwolf is listening on. And then I've just had to chmod that because otherwise it's like the emulator can't, can't read or write to it. And the, the only other thing I changed then which can be done in the launcher or in the config file, it makes, makes no difference is under custom configuration, you just have this one line which enables the serial port and forwards it to a, a, a device on the host in which in this case is the one I just configured. On the, the Linux side, I just have Direwolf, which if I start the emulator, we should see We should see in the background it talking about a connection. In fact, it may not because the connection may already exist, but I can show the configuration here. This is on the Amiga side.
in the Amicom directory of the config .kiss.ac. Um, the only thing I needed to change in here is the call sign and my name. I think that was it. The by default, it's already in Kiss mode. There's there's nothing else in that file that I think I changed changed the English to on just to provide some English error messages rather than the German. Uh, and you can see I'm just running the standard uh, high resolution. Yeah, the serial device there it doesn't. I don't believe that's actually used when you're just talking to a the physical device. Or at least the board rate doesn't matter anyway if it's being forwarded uh, over the network. I've not had to modify that. So yeah, that's that's really it. The only other thing I needed to do on the Amiga side was in system devs DOS drivers, I needed to copy the AUX, which is the, the serial port driver for Amiga DOS. And that was it. There's there's nothing additional on uh, Direwolf. It, it all just works. <laughs> I make it sound so easy. It all just works. But before I realized I could forward the serial connection using a virtual device using SOCAT, I tried setting it up differently, trying to forward uh, packets between the local interface with uh, FSUAE will, will set up a, a port locally which will act as a serial port, but it's a network port, not a, a serial interface. And I was trying to forward packets between, between that device and Direwolf and it wasn't working and I was trying different ways of doing this, uh, including IP tables and SSH tunnels for port forwarding. Uh, none of this worked and in the end the simplest solution using SOCAT worked without fail. Really simple. So when, when I have a better example of this working, I will post it. It's really quite nice to use. Um, it's, Amicom is a fantastic bit of software anyway, and it's certainly better than the alternatives I've got under Linux. So it's been really, really great to get this working. Plus, it's got the uh, the feelings of well, let's just say my my teenage self would have been amazed to see Amiga OS running on a, a laptop connecting over the network to a box running Unix connected to a radio like the ICOM seventy three hundred. As impressive as it is, whilst having the front end issues. So, yeah, thank you. And I'll post uh, some more details and links in the, the comments to this video. So, thank you again until next time. This is Steve, Oscar Hotel 3, Sierra Papa November.